If you're considering a PRP injection for knee pain, arthritis, or any other injury, you could be wasting your money. Most people assume PRP works the same everywhere, but that's simply not true. The effectiveness of your injection depends on one critical factor that most clinics never even mention. And if you don't ask about this, your platelet-rich plasma injection might do absolutely nothing. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. I'm a sports medicine doctor and I've helped countless patients navigate PRP treatments. I've also written for top medical publications like the British Journal of Sports Medicine and I've helped co-author research on orthobiologics and regenerative medicine. Today I'm going to show you why PRP sometimes works incredibly well and why it completely fails in other cases. More importantly, I'll reveal the single most important question you need to ask before getting an injection. That way, you don't waste thousands of dollars on something that just won't help. But before we get to that, let's first discuss what platelet-rich plasma injections actually are and how they work. PRP has become an increasingly popular treatment for musculoskeletal conditions, particularly knee osteoarthritis and tendon problems. The procedure itself is fairly simple. It starts with a standard blood draw, where a small amount of your own blood is collected, just like when you get lab work done. That blood is then placed into a centrifuge, a machine that rapidly spins to separate the platelets and plasma from other blood components like red and white blood cells. The goal is to concentrate the platelets, which contain powerful growth factors that help reduce inflammation, stimulate healing, and promote tissue repair. Once the PRP is prepared, it's injected directly into the injured area, whether it's a knee joint affected by arthritis, a damaged tendon, or another musculoskeletal issue. The idea is that by delivering a high concentration of healing factors directly to the injury site, PRP can accelerate recovery and reduce pain. And all of this sounds very promising, right? But here's the catch. Not all PRP injections are the same. The number of platelets in the injection is the single most important factor in determining whether PRP will actually work. And this is where many people, and even most doctors, go wrong. That's why, before you get a PRP injection, you need to ask one crucial question. How many platelets will I be getting in my PRP injection? A systematic review published in Arthroscopy analyzed 29 randomized control trials evaluating PRP for knee osteoarthritis. The study found that PRP injections that contained higher platelet doses, averaging 5.5 billion platelets per injection, led to significant clinical improvements, while injections with lower platelet doses, averaging 2.3 billion platelets per injection, showed no statistical difference from placebo. The results at both 6 months and 12 months post-injection demonstrated that platelet concentration was directly correlated with better outcomes. These findings suggest that PRP is not a one-size-fits-all treatment. Its effectiveness is highly dependent on platelet dosing. A separate meta-analysis published in the American Journal of Sports Medicine further supports this conclusion. The study examined 18 randomized control trials with nearly 2,000 patients and found that PRP was only effective when platelet concentration concentrations exceeded 1 million platelets per microliter. Patients who received high-dose PRP experienced significant pain relief and functional improvements, with benefits lasting up to 12 months. However, low-dose PRP failed to show a meaningful clinical benefit, particularly in terms of pain relief, as measured by the visual analog scale. This research highlights why many PRP studies in the past have produced conflicting results. Some trials use PRP with too few platelets to be effective effective, and this led to skepticism about PRP's overall efficacy. And the importance of platelet dosing in PRP injections is not limited to knee osteoarthritis. A systematic review and meta-analysis published in the American Journal of Sports Medicine analyzed PRP injections for lateral epicondylitis, also known as tennis elbow. This study found a direct relationship between platelet concentration and clinical outcomes. Patients who received high-dose PRP, which was more than three times the normal platelet concentration in blood, showed significant symptom relief compared to placebo and other treatments. Conversely, low-dose PRP was 
was no better than placebo. The study also found that 58.5% of the variability in PRP outcomes could be explained solely by platelet concentration. This reinforces the idea that PRP only works when enough platelets are delivered to the injured tissue. Given this overwhelming evidence, patients considering PRP must be proactive in ensuring they receive an effective dose. When consulting a healthcare provider about PRP, you should specifically ask about platelet concentration and total platelet dose. A good provider should be able to tell you a ballpark platelet count in your PRP preparation. Research suggests that PRP doses above 5 billion platelets per injection are ideal, while anything below 3 billion platelets may be ineffective. Additionally, double spin PRP preparation techniques tend to yield higher platelet concentrations, which may further improve outcomes. I currently recommend a 60 cc blood draw to obtain around 10 billion platelets for large joints like the knee, shoulder, or hip. This is for a single injection. So if you're treating both the rotator cuff tendon and the shoulder joint, you'd need two injections, which means doubling the blood draw to 120 cc's. Recent research is now pushing the limits with some studies using a 120 cc blood draw to concentrate around 20 billion platelets in a single injection for knee arthritis treatment. This higher dose is being explored to maximize PRP's healing potential and improve outcomes. I think it's safe to say that the controversy surrounding PRP is not because the treatment itself is ineffective. It's because many clinics do not standardize platelet dosing, and this leads to inconsistent results across studies and patient experiences. So I hope by now you know that platelet dosing is the single most important factor in determining whether it works. But there's a lot more to PRP than just platelet counts. For example, what medications are you supposed to avoid before PRP? How many injections do you actually need? And what conditions does PRP work best for? These details can make or break your results, which is why I put together an ultimate guide to PRP injections. In this deep dive, I'll walk you through everything you need to know so you can make the best decision for your health and get the most out of your treatment. Click here to watch now.